Mic test. One, two. Standby crew. Three, two, one. Rolling for on her side. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and welcome to On Her Side. I have with me my guest Hiba Shah. Hiba, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Baji, how are you? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah for making the time to join me here today. So today our topic is to talk about the perfect mom. And is there such a thing as, as a perfect mom? And if, sh if there is, then I would like to find her and meet her and talk Can to her. Can we be friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so speaking about mothers in general, you know, these days, there's just so much pressure, I feel, that um, is not just put upon mothers, but mothers take on as well. And, and I think just with the advent of social media and all of the technology that we have access to, sometimes we're overwhelmed with the information that's coming our way, right? There's just all kinds of strategies and um, tips and tricks and do's and don'ts to motherhood and there's advice that comes to you from all different sides and you're the proud mother of four children. Tell me about them. How old are they? So I have two boys, Alhamdulillah, 19 and 18 years old and I have two girls, um, Alhamdulillah, who are 13 and 10. Mashallah. 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 Yeah. So you've been navigating all of the growth phases in the last two yes, decades or so. They're all over the spectrum. Yes. yes. So how have you been navigating all of this? Uh, Baji, it's, it is hard. It is very hard work um, because it seems that you get out of one phase and then you feel like you're, you're through to the next, you know, easier pace. Yeah. And then the other one's now going to go through that exact situation. Yes. And then so. each child is different. Exactly. And their challenges are different, exactly. right? So you feel like you've mastered it with one child and you think, I'll just apply the same approach right. to all of the other ones. Unfortunately, right? you can't copy paste, nope. right? So nope. that's the, <laughs> that's the yes, issue. They're very unique. They're very unique. Your, your language has to be different with each. They understand differently. You, you have to approach them differently. Yeah. You just sort of maybe detangle yourself from all of the external pressures and maybe just focus on your children, what kind of personalities do they bring to the table and customize your approach? I have to remind myself that it's mm. very hard mm -hmm. to not. Mm. Sometimes then my husband will kind of, when he overhears something and he'll just be like, well, maybe you want to take a moment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, think about what message you're sending here. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to have someone to kind of balance yeah. it out. Yeah. And, um, you know, it makes me think about, you know, about those people who are single parents yeah. and how Alami has made them so strong that they're able to navigate and raise such grounded um, children, mashallah. Yeah. So yeah. hats yeah. off to them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, you did mention language, you know, and yes. how you speak to your children. And I feel like there's so many messages and challenges that they're facing outside the home oh, as yeah. they're growing up which makes it even more important for us as mothers to intelligently communicate with them. You know, that whole concept of, of building um, emotional intelligence and, and, um, and opening up those lines of communication in a very sensitive manner. So, Baji, I try to remind myself that they are children and they know right now their world through me and my husband and how we approach it. What your reaction to them at that age, um, how you react to them and respond to that will determine how they behave when they're adult. So if you were to just say, Oh, oh no, what happened? You know, tell me about empathize it. You know, yeah. empathize. Let them figure it out. Don't fix the problem. Yeah. That's an, an issue yes, that we, we have. Yes, we have this writing reflex, right? That Don't we just want to make it right for them right away. Let's make them happy yeah. for the moment. Yes. And, and for the moment, it will work. You can buy them an ice cream and you can buy their feelings and it will work yeah. <laughs> in that moment. Yeah. But what you're doing is you're suppressing them, their yeah. feelings mm. for that time. And then what happens is later on as an adult, something will trigger some repressed feelings. Yeah. And I, I was reading about this, actually, that what happens as in, in adults, if you're not able to um, 
discuss your feelings with somebody in a healthy way, mm -hmm. then they shut down as mm -hmm. adults. They won't be able to communicate yeah. effectively. And also the other thing too is that you haven't taught them how to problem solve, right? So yes, right. they're in this mess. It could be their fault. It could be somebody else's fault. But now how do you rectify the situation? Yes. And by just writing it, you know, yeah. how we want to do, which is our mm -hmm. natural urge is to make them happy, like you said, yeah. um, we haven't taught them those skills. Right. Um, yeah, it's so hard though because you don't want to see yeah. your child like suffer in any way, but you're actually causing them to suffer if you're not preparing them with yeah. the tools to yeah. cope as adults. Yeah, you mentioned um, validating their feelings and not just shutting them down when yeah. they're upset and just saying don't be upset. So right. asking those questions and really helping them think through how they came to this emotion and why they're feeling this way. Right? And Baji, sometimes we it's you're kind of in an impossible situation as a parent because you're maybe you're in an important meeting, right? And um, you're with some important guests and you don't want your child acting up and you will give them a look, right? Mm -hmm. And that look is is enough, right? To suppress those feelings for now. Yeah. But make sure that you do address them later yeah, on, yeah, right? Because absolutely. in real life, you can't always just, let's get down and ha tell me about your feelings. We can't, we don't have the time in that moment because that there is moment, something else yeah. that is prioritizing. Yeah. No, I also do that. I, I Sometimes when I see something that has happened or my daughter has acted in a different way or behaved in a different way, like you said, when I'm busy with something else, I always make it a mental note. Sometimes it's actually the smart way to go because they don't necessarily want you to address that behavior in front of everybody yes. else as well, right? So I, I do make a mental note and I think to myself when we're maybe, you know, bedtime or so mm -hmm. that day, next day or so, I am going to ask about yes. why why that was happening and why are you feeling this way? Was there something that ha triggered it? And, and all of that, right? And, and if you have multiple children, what you could do is use what apps are available to you <laughs> yes. and, and write it down. Like, yes. I literally write down the strangest things, Baji, if you see my phone, like... It makes sense to me. <laughs> it makes worry. sense to me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing, too, is that I've always been told, you know, you need to really be friends with your with your children, in, in my case, my daughter. And... We have to communicate with them at their level. We have to make sure that they're open up to us. But I feel like there's a downside to that, which which sometimes I experience, unfortunately, where she, I, I think my daughter begins to feel that I am her friend, like mm -hmm. uh, just a friend mm -hmm. and not a mother. And, yeah. and um, you know, then it takes two of us, like myself and my husband, to kind of bring her back to reality yeah. that we're still her parents yeah. and we need to be treated a different way. So yeah. I'm still trying to navigate that myself in my life. How old is your daughter? So she's 10 now. She's, she's almost 10, 10 yes. She's, she's still uh, under a certain phase. Uh, you're, you've not crossed that threshold yet, okay. I don't think, at 10. But when, let's say, like they're 12, 13, I had um, my son, who we were, ve were very friendly towards. And like what you said, they they get confused. There's a blurred line now. Right? Yes. So the, my, my husband said something to him, and he's just, my son's like, bruh. <laughs> bruh, abu, bruh. And um, my husband was very serious and he's just like, no, that's not okay. Yeah. I didn't raise you to call me bruh. You, I earned my title for yeah. you to call me abu. You're going to call me abu. He says, like, no, this is where, this is opening up something else, right? So then he's going to call me bruh, then he's going to... Is it going to call me by my other first name or whatever, right? In, in the language, yeah. yeah. So it's important, I think, to kind of navigate gently and just explain why. Because, you know, my son probably was thinking, why is he correcting me like yeah. this? That's the difference between being friends versus being friendly. Yes. So it doesn't mean you go to the opposite side where you become extremely authoritarian right. and you're the parent and you've got to show them that you're the one who's, you know, yeah. in the in the power role at home. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be friendly, to, to talk to them at that level, but maintain that level of respect. It is a balance. Like I was, I think, too friendly <laughs> over the years. <laughs> and so trying to dial it back a little bit is difficult. What is a perfect mom? Yeah. There is no such thing yeah. as a perfect mom. Yeah. You are, every every mother does tries to do the best for her child, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're doing a great job. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, so you know, I was also thinking then, mothers always um, over the years, you know, are 
are tending to the needs of their children, other family members as well. Obviously, uh, a mother is, is a central role in any family unit. Sometimes they get used to being needed, you know, what, where they're taking care of everyone else's needs and, and they remain relevant as such. But then there comes a time as children grow up, they will realize that they're not needed as much, mm -hmm. you know, especially maybe preparing meals for their kids, etc. And then, and, and they might feel like they're not relevant. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's a really important time for a woman to sit back and reflect on, um, you know, what her role is as it's transitioning through the life phases of the child. You know, um, in some ways I agree, and in some ways I see a flip side where um, they need you even more as they're older. Yeah. I thought the younger stage was like the tough part, yeah. like the car seats, picking them up, putting them to sleep, colic babies, this. I thought that was the tough part, yeah. running on empty sleep. But when they got, get as they get older yeah. and as you've built a relationship with them and they come to you with problems and you're like... <gasps> I don't know yeah. how to, I don't and know. And then you wish you could just go back to the yeah, diapers like, and yeah, the yeah, yeah, bottles, yeah, right? Give me crying Because these night. are more complicated yep. problems. Yeah, yes. Yes. Let, let's do yes. that. Yeah. I would take that you know, yes. down sometimes. Yes. You know? But I, I do think that we need to have relationships outside of just our children. There has yeah. to be a life as a mother. Yeah. You should be focusing on your relationship with your husband too or with your family a support network it yes. takes a village yes, right yes. so we we need that village because yeah. that village is going to help raise that that friend that you have maybe they have children and then those children can be a support network for your yeah. uh, child too yeah. having that support system and that network of people enables you to transition more easily mm -hmm. into different phases as well That's of motherhood, it. like you said. Exactly. And so to, to have that healthy transition in your mindset as yes. well, you need support, mm -hmm. right? 100%. Like everybody, I, I remember when I got married, um, I think the first, my first instinct was to write a letter to my mom and say, I really value and appreciate everything you've done for me, Ami, because I didn't realize how much work went into even making one um, salon. You know, yeah. like I didn't realize yeah. how much work yes. it was. Yes. I, I, when I, in the beginning, when I made one meal, I was like, that is my achievement. Thing. Yes, <laughs> yes, I have done this, yes. you know? Yes, yes. And, um, but, you know, she was doing that with, six kids yeah. um you know and her parents and her and every day and every, every day every day we are still looking to our mothers for advice and for consultation and um, appreciation as well absolutely. and validation right absolutely so yes the needs might change over time as the child grows and transitions into different phases yeah. but your relevance will never end in exactly. the life of a child exactly you'll always be that um, safe space to to vent um, yeah. without being judged. Yes, you know, and loved so. unconditionally. 100%. Right. Sometimes, if you're not able to transition in a healthy manner, you know, we see examples of of mothers who want to demand, you know, to be relevant in the lives of their children. So as their children grow up and they're now married, they sometimes are living alone, like away from, from the parents yeah. and are leading independent lives. But the mothers are still so invested in their yes. lives. Normally, you'd think that it would be like, you know, a mother-in-law um, who's really overprotective of her son. Mm -hmm. But in fact, I feel like it's it's mothers of daughters are, as well mm -hmm. who are sometimes over-invested and over-involved in the lives of their daughters, even after marriage. They they were so busy their whole lives with their children. Now, when they've gone, it's um, the empty nesters now, right? Yeah. And so it's like, what do we do to... Um, to occupy our time, yeah, yeah. right? And, so. and there's resentment too, because yeah. another partner now has entered into the life of your child, right? Yeah, and they've gone through hardships themselves, and then uh, they see the, their children not experiencing uh, even close to the hardships that they did, and that they almost think, like, why, why is it so easy? And like, now it's important, you know, mother-in-laws can be villainized as well, yes. and it's, it's important to recognize that Mother-in-laws also went through something for them to be repeating perhaps this kind of yeah. behavior yeah. Um, towards daughter-in-laws or even their own sons. Or Yeah, and I think we also have to be, um, you know, r relatively content with the fact that our children now have grown up 
they're living their lives independently. They have, inshallah, inshallah, supportive hus husbands and wives mm -hmm. who are uh, who are there to support them through their journey in the next phase of their life. And our job as mothers was to instill in them those skills right. that they needed to become successful. And so if if we see that happening in front of us, yeah. that's where we should really Celebrate stop, that. right? Take that win. Alhamdulillah. Don't do right. anything to to destroy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. In any way. Protect that peace. Yes, yeah. and I think going back to the, you know, what we were saying about building a network yes. um, for ourselves, they will uh, hopefully support us yeah. um, with with our mindset as we transition, you know. Yes, they have to. That's what that's what you've been investing in with those yeah. relationships, yes. right? So yes. you do the same for them. Yes. You, I don't think even my own friends uh, and my sisters, I don't think that they realize um how much they've healed me along yeah. the way when I've needed it. Yeah. So if I was able to pick up the phone and ask or vent and be like, why I said something like this, my child is taking it like this, like, am I crazy? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they have in their ways comforted me and protected me yeah. and assured me, you know, and shown me some neat mm -hmm. trips tips and tricks along and the way. And you learn from each other's experiences. That's, That's it. That's the bottom line. That's why you have That's support, it. right? Um, now, I was also thinking, you know, of course, mothers are humans. And yeah. as humans are, we have lots of deficiencies and weaknesses. And there there might be some women who, um, perhaps due to their own life experiences, have low self-esteem. Maybe they lack self-confidence. Yeah. Once they get married and they enter motherhood, it's really difficult for them to pass on um, you know, the, the opposite qualities. Obviously, nobody wants their children to be the same way if they, if these are weaknesses that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Sometimes you have to fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> you have to pretend. Yep, yep. I've got it all together, yes, right? Yes. I know what I'm doing. Yes, yeah, yes. And yeah. also, I mean, to think about how if you're not the person who's going to stand up for your children, right. then who will? But if we, we need to assert ourselves in situations as well, we need to build our own confidence. We need to work on where our weaknesses are, yeah. because if we don't, then it's just going to continue from generation to gen generation. Yeah. You're not going to equip your children with the tools. Yeah. So they see from you, they learn from you. Yeah. What we've learned from our parents that, for example, my, my father, he had four, five daughters, one son. My uh, brother is the eldest. I'm the youngest of my family. And each time, you would think with five daughters, maybe when the third daughter was born or the fourth daughter or the fifth daughter was born, you would be sad, miserable. But to be e just equally happy, if not more happy, that Alami has blessed me, yeah. gratitude, bring it back to Alhamdulillah for the problems that you have yeah. as opposed to what could be. That's where you pick up the skills for sure from within your own homes and your own parents and, and all of that. But every child, like we've mentioned, absorbs it a different way. Yes. And so if you do have these deficiencies and weaknesses as a mom and you recognize them, well, the first step is to recognize that you do. Baji, I've straight up apologized to my kids. I'm really sorry if I've hurt your feelings. And yes. and it took a lot for me to first time apologize to yeah. one of my kids yeah. about it yeah. because it puts me in a very vulnerable position. Yeah. And they've always seen me as this authority figure. Who's got it all together. Yeah. Who and, knows all the answers. And so I found my, my child was crying that I was apologizing yeah. and was like, what? What is happening yes, here? Why yes, is my mom yes. apologizing? And then it, that reaction made me think that, oh, maybe I have been too, um, maybe I've been a bit robotic in terms of feelings like I, I know what's going on. I'm going to fix this problem. And, and when I can't, and then I'm breaking down and they're witnessing this. They don't understand, they don't understand. what's happened. Talking to your children and telling them, you know, I don't actually know the answer to this either, but mm -hmm. I'm going to try and figure, figure it, out it out with you. Yeah. That gives them insight into your yourself as not just this perfect person, right. but a human. Like, and I think that makes think? them empathetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. a lot of children, because they don't see that vulnerable side of their parents or right. their mother, they tend to put them up on pedestals and then sometimes it it doesn't you don't come through right and there's right. so much disappointment because they had all of this trust and mm -hmm. confidence that you would take care of it yeah. but you just didn't know 
Yeah. You know? No, sometimes they'll just, just wanted to talk to you about it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that sometimes is enough. Um, what about then that mom who is sometimes overly proud of her children and her accomplishments? Oh, she knows exactly what she's doing. To the point all of the time. sometimes even arrogance, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and even shirk sometimes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's kind of like, well, my child is the best. Mm-hmm. They have always overachieved. They have the best grades. They've won this medal and this medal and this medal. And look at all of them and they make no mistakes and they, they're just perfect you personally, know personally I wouldn't personally for my own sanity I don't think I could be around that kind of energy because I don't need any extra pressure in my life yes. um, because it it does inevitably your company does make you see things in a certain way of course. and so then I remember this one time Baji like Um, I was, my, my kids were like winning all the prizes at Ishtama and I would be so like proud of them. And like my, my husband is so proud. Then we're calling um, Dado and Dadajan and Nana, Nani and we're like, look, you know, they, they did this. So did I inadvertently send a message to my kids that this is your value and this is like, this is what we're going to celebrate. This is why we love you. Yeah, yeah, this is why we love you. Now we're so proud of you. And they're little things that they are doing, um, not so much, like, what about like when, when one has one, like if my son has comforted my daughter, for example, like, And really like taking care of her. I, I should really be celebrating that yeah. because that Or is Or even celebrating the fact that they've not come in first, but at least they tried. And because then the child starts to feel the pressure that, you know, they're so happy and that when I came once. in first that yeah. what will happen if, if I, I don't. W- I'm not able to perform? Going through it, I don't think even that stage mom realizes that what she's doing. Yes. I think she's thinking, this is my duty. Yes. I have to... Yes. Um, I have to push the best my child, children to do the best, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they yes. can, to perform the She best way. She has to yeah. be, you know, this way. So uh, with my daughter, we were at, at, at Nishtama, and um, I I would find myself, like, when she's getting up on stage, am I mouthing the words, like something, <laughs> how just how we practiced, like, yeah. a thousand times at home. Yeah. And, um, and I think she forgot something on stage. She started crying. Mm. And I'm like, oh. <gasps> Like that's what? not what I needed. No, no, that's not my child. Like my my child doesn't sit there and cry up on the stage. Like I've taught her. Like she why isn't she confident enough? Yeah. Like why did this happen? And so then even now when I'm comforting her and obviously she can feel the energy around me. Yeah. This is me comforting her for the sake of other people there watching me. Yes. Uh, how am I parenting? And yeah. I'm feeling extra pressure yes. at this point. Yes. And so I'm like I'm like you know no, 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 it's yeah. okay it's okay yeah. you know don't cry don't cry it's fine yeah. it's fine it's fine sensory over overload is going on and so she's just like I don't want to be anywhere on the stage so then it's like let's just take her off the stage it's okay yeah and then uh, you know somebody said to me Hiba, like, why are you putting so much pressure on your child? I'm like, I didn't. I didn't even say anything to her. Like, I I don't even know why she's yeah. crying like this. Yeah. Like, And I was kind of annoyed. Like, why are you crying? You're blaming me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, are you, why are you doing this, yes. right? No. And so it, we, we are putting pressure on our yeah. kids. We don't realize. Yeah. So this is the thing, right? So we absorb the pressure from society. And then we put that on, on our children, on mm-hmm. the shoulders of our, our small shoulders of uh-huh. our small children, tiny, right? Tiny, tiny. And they learn that in order to please their parents and make them happy, they yeah. have to achieve, they have to overachieve and all of that. And that can lead to some serious mental health challenges that, that the youth sure. face. There's people that I know, you know, in my circle where sometimes the parents put so much pressure on the child to perform at a certain yeah. level academically, mm-hmm. extracurricular, sports, and whatever else you have it, they have to be in everything that the child is exhausted. Mm-hmm. They're not able to keep up, and it makes them depressed. You, you, you'll see maybe their peers, and, and we will, as parents, remind our children, well, look at, you know, so-and-so. That's what I was just going to say, the comparison right? factor, and we do it a lot. We do it. So we're trying to do it in a positive But way to, try to, to relatable. motivate them. Yeah, relatable. Oh, But it's the worst thing class. to do. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's honestly so bad. It is. It you is know? so bad. And sometimes even the children speak up and they say, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm me. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not 
harsa. I'm not hardy. I'm not nadi. I'm not sadia. You know, I'm but then, me. But then they will see that their parents are painting so and so in a in a great light. Yeah. And then they will be looking for that person's weaknesses and will and will relate them. Well, well, that person does this thing, and that person also does that thing. And you don't want to encourage that kind of language or behavior yeah. in your child. You don't want them to think, well, I'm going to just ruin that person's image in front of your eyes right now so that you can stop placing this person above me. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Yeah. that's something I, I noticed was happening here and there and I quickly shut that down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 And, yeah. It, and it's something like you said, it's something that we do so often, sometimes yeah. with the best intentions and sometimes mm -hmm. unconsciously we fall into that where we're just trying to motivate them yeah. and yeah. say, you know, look, so-and-so is doing this and this yeah. and this and look at them, yep. you know, and, and it's, it's, actually negatively impacting your child because they're internalizing that yeah. as criticism mm -hmm. and imagine being criticized by your own mother and right, that's right. so hurtful it's so much because that's the person who should mean everything yes, to you yes and so if if they are sent if they are disappointed or s if they're showing that then then yeah. s you're getting that subliminal message that you're not enough yeah right yeah And then also the other thing, too, is that sometimes there are kids who they are living up to those expectations, but because they're always seeing their mom praise them, yeah. you know, in front of their friends, yeah. her friends in the social circles, grandparents, family, etc., they grow up to have these inflated egos mm -hmm. because they do feel they're perfect and yeah. that people should treat <laughs> them that way. Yeah. Right. And then they have a huge reality check when the world doesn't align to yes. their thoughts. Yes. Right. And and then also, Baji, on the flip side, you know, I noticed about myself as well, which is not some, which is something I'm working on, is that when you don't praise them enough, publicly, I will almost put them down a little bit, like, because I don't want them to, in the in the fear right, of them becoming right, right, arrogant, right, right. I don't want, and I see, alhamdulillah, Alamia has given me such beautiful children, Baji. Oh, I don't want to, like, get emotional, Masha. but but I want them to know that they have to be humble. Every single child has this gift that Alamia has given, and sometimes when I witness that gift, I'm almost like, you know, like, please, you know, let me protect them. I don't want them to even see that gift sometimes because I'm like, no, because... They'll become Yeah, 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 they're going to be like or... this. They're going to be like, well, I'm this, yeah. you know? I can do that. Yes, yes, So yes. we've got to be really careful. Sometimes kids turn into bullies then, right? So they exert that same yeah, yeah. level of um, power, I suppose, on their peers where I'm the best, you're not. But it goes back to the emotional intelligence. Yes. As a child, they'll be aggressive, right? Yeah. And then that child will be labeled as uh, naughty and, um, oh, not, not a good kid, too much trouble, yeah. you know? And then, and, and they overflow their emotions and that's what the aggression is. And then when that child grows up, because they've not been allowed to feel and and work through those feelings in a healthy way, then they become bullies. Yeah. And, and it can also lead to, to violence, right? Yeah. And we've seen it so often, domestic violence, right? In, um, in spouses, it's, it's, it's awful, yeah. right? Yeah. So why do you also, the importance of delegation needs to be discussed here, yeah. right? We have so much pressure on ourselves right? We put them on ourselves, but we also are not good with maybe saying we need help with this without not just our support network, but within our own home, yeah. right? It can be with my husband. It can be with my children. Yeah. Now I have both boys and girls yeah. and I sometimes find myself when I'm like cooking something, um, I will be like, oh, to my girls I'm like, come 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 in here let me teach you how yeah. to, you know, you're naturally inclined to think that the daughter, why is it learn. that way? Like, yeah. In this day yes. and age, why yes. am I not saying to my boys, hey, come here, buddy, like, come and help me yes. out. You Learn know, to I'm iron not. your own clothes. Yep. It's important to let them know yeah. that, hey, everybody come here. We're going to yeah. do this together. Yeah. And uh, you can take care of cutting onions. And they're like, my boy's like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. Goggles and like <laughs> going into the garage and getting goggles. Complicating things. Complicating yes. because they are not <laughs> used to any yeah. of this, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, But, but this them. is how you create well-rounded children, right? That's um, the goal, inshallah. And then inshallah, inshallah, they're going to be good support to their own partners, whether it's husbands or wives. And, and that's how you are able to spread, you know, that the paradise, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that 
paradise lies under the feet of mothers. And so firstly, something that I've learned is that the paradise is not easy to earn. We understand that status. Why is it so high now, yes, right? It's earning, earning your jannat is the hardest thing. Earning your jannat and then also giving that paradise to your children mm -hmm. through your training, right. through your advice, through your love. Right. And then enabling them to take all of that and then move forward and spread that right. that essence of paradise in their own homes, in their own spheres, with their own children, in mm -hmm. their own families, and and this is how this is how uh, a healthy spiritual society will progress. Inshallah. Oh, yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah for the conversation, Hiba. It was you, wonderful Baji. talking to you. Jazakallah, Baji. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Cut. That's a wrap for On Her Side.